Good morning. Here we are again, First Baptist Church of Deer Park with the adult Bible study. We're doing lesson number 10 in our material. It's Mark 12, 41 through 44. Now, the title of this lesson is The Discipline of Giving. And you think, oh my, here we go. We're going to we're gonna talk about giving again. That's all that church needs, wants up there. They just want your money, and it's all they talk about is money, and, and you know, it, it's just another plea for giving money. And, you know, uh, people say that a lot, but do you realize that the title of this lesson is The Discipline of Giving, The Discipline of Giving. It's just like the discipline we've been studying, the discipline of Bible study, the, the discipline of, of, of prayer, all of those things, it's the same thing. It's a discipline of a Christian life. Now, one of the one of the great I'm gonna give you a little testimony here, one of the greatest testimonies that I mean examples I've ever seen of what this lesson is talking about is one of the discipline of giving. Some 40 odd years ago, probably 35 at least, we were in a building campaign for this sanctuary that we have here now. We were, uh, we were in a, a several campaigns, but if I remember correctly, it was the one for the sanctuary that we presently have. We were out at the Pasadena Convention Center, a big get together and banquet type thing, and cards were passed out and, and uh, Commitments were made, and, and people were giving their hundreds, and people were giving their thousands, and and there was a young lady, a little diminutive young lady named Dodie. Many of you might remember Dodie, but Dodie did not have a lot to give. She did not have a lot to work with. Uh, finances were very tight in her life. And I wish I remembered the details, which I don't, so I'm just going to make a stab at it. But, but the, the effect is the same. Whatever she had, she, I think she had somehow committed to two or three dollars a week to that, to that building campaign. And, and I'm telling you what, guys, what she gave was equivalent to tens of thousands to someone else. Because she gave out of something she did not have to give. She gave sacrificially, and she gave because her heart loved the Lord. And you see, that uh, the question in this material today it simply says, what does my giving reveal about my relationship with God? Well, I know one thing, it revealed Dodie's relationship with God because she loved the Lord, and she was willing to sacrificially give so that the Lord's work might be completed and, and, and move forward in this way. So let's pick up now and let's read Mark 12, 41 through 44. And he sat down opposite Jesus, and he sat down opposite the treasury and began observing how the people were putting money into the treasury. And many rich people were putting in large sums. A poor widow came in and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a cent. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors to the treasury. For they all put in out of their surplus, but she out of her poverty put in all she owed, all she had to live on. Jesus had just been warding off the establishment for the, the entire book of Mark. And he he, he Bust with them, he, he contended with them, he had uh, he told parables and stories about how, how, how one should live. And I, I, I got an idea Jesus would probably wore out for this time putting up with all of that. So he goes and sits quietly at the temple. The temple treasury, we understood, was located along the wall of the court of women. And along this wall, there were 13 trumpet-like shaped receptacles. And, you know, a trumpet, it flared out at the end, and then it gets narrow. Uh, you know, I suppose it didn't say that, but I'm just guessing that probably it narrowed down so someone couldn't get their arm and hand in there to get some of the treasury out of there. Uh, it seemed like that today. You know, you, you still 
get things stolen at church. You realize right. that? It still happens. So, but here we are. Whatever the whatever the reason was for that, they were trumpet shaped receptacles that they put money in. Now, each trumpet had a, a subscription on it, though, and told what the money was to be used for. There, there was various things the money would be used for, and so you you gave to to the to the necessary need there. And it was going to be directed to that. You know, when we think about um, the the money and, and the receptacles, and and uh, you just remember, and Jesus sitting there watching. Remember that little ditty we used to sing to the children: "Be careful, little hand, what you do, for the Father up above is looking down in love." See, Jesus is watching. I, I still think he. I still think he's watching. How about that song that says? His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Boy, that there's truth in those two little ditties and, and that uh, and that song. But see, Jesus is watching how the people give. Uh, he, he, Jesus is not concerned about the, the amount. He, he's seeing how they give, and also how much they keep for themselves, because he could tell by the by the nature of the person there what they were giving. See, the wealthy cast in much. They were big givers. They'd come up there with a, uh, with a big sack of coins. You know, I, I, paper money was not available then the way we know it now. There was a, a there would be a document or something that, that you could write out as an IOU and you could exchange it for silver in certain places. But primarily it was coins that was used then. And these coins, when they dropped them into those funnels up there, it made a loud noise. And Sometimes these guys will stand out there and say, now watch, I'm about, I'm about to give now. So be, be aware. And oh, it just all of the, the money that, that went in and made the loud noises because they, were, they had a big bucket full of coins. Matthew 6, verse 2 says this. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets. So that they may be honored by the men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. These guys sometimes would blow a trumpet before they gave, so people would gather around so they could see them pouring in their coin in, into the receptacles. And, and how ludicrous is that? You see, now notice Jesus did not criticize the generosity of the wealthy. He just didn't criticize, he just showed what they were doing. But notice who he commended. Jesus said this little widow said, gave, said her gift was more valuable than all the others put together. Now, she had given sacrificially, guys, the others out of their abundance. Now, Scripture said she gave two mites. Now, each mite was worth one-eighth of a penny. One-eighth of a penny in, in today's world. So she gave in total one-fourth of a penny See, the rabbis, forgave, they, they forbade giving less than two mites. You had to have at least two mites or they, they wouldn't want you to give. And so what we're saying is she put in all she had or else she'd have put in just that one mite, I think, if they'd have allowed it. But she gave it all. You know, you, you think about this for a minute. I have a, I have a mite here. I, I know you can't see it, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little mite. It's in, in this point right here, there's a little bitty... Uh, mite in there, and I assure you that thing weighs less than a chicken feather, I, I would imagine. And it's very thin, very small, hold up, about the half the size of a dime. And, and it is a widow's mite. Now, my grandson gave this to me one time, and and I don't know where he got it yet, but but I'm very proud of that widow's mite because when you when you read a story like this, you understand what what he's talking about here. Now. I, uh, you know, what is mine is one eighth of a penny. We said, well, uh, I, I Google a mite, what is mite now, and it's sixty one dollars. So, so you see, they they got a little more expensive, haven't they? Sixty one dollars for a what is mite right now on on the internet. You see, it's it's a thing here that. But she, the whole point is, she gave all she had. She gave out of of everything. She gave more than, than she could afford. And, and that's exactly what 
uh, what went on with her giving and her thought process. Now, let me let me just say this. Little did she know whose eyes were watching her that day. Jesus was sitting there quietly and still and watching her give. Now, little did she know, God looked into her purse. Little did she know the joy she brought to Jesus that day. And little did she know her gift that day would find its way into the Gospels. And little did she know that for the next 2,000 years, her generosity would be talked about and preached about, you know, to the very end of the earth. Because she gave those two mice to the temple treasury. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart. Do just as he has purchased, purposed in his heart. Not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now these verses simply tell us that we're to give cheerfully to the Lord. Now cheerfully literally means hilariously. <laughs> Think about that. When God says give cheerfully, he's talking about give hilariously. I mean, that's, that's with great joy. That's with laughing. That's, that's with appreciative. And see, God loves people who give hilariously. And now, now here, here's something else that, that you'll learn the more you study this. It simply says, if you're giving begrudgingly, just don't give, God. You know, if you say, I, don't, I hate this, I don't want to give, then don't give. You're better off to keep it in your in your pocket. And, and I think you'll find that is the case throughout. See, our attitude when we give must be, Lord, I give this freely. It all belongs to you. That's our attitude we must have when we give. There's an old, uh, old preacher. Uh, he's dead and gone now, but he's named Clovis Chapel. And he was early 19th, I mean early 1900s, up to probably Truman, somewhere in there. And he wrote this about preaching from the pulpit. He said, I have never felt any hesitation in speaking to my congregation about giving. I thrill to it. <laughs> I revel in it. I love to see the generous enjoy it. And I love to see the stingy suffer. So, so he, he had no qualms about teaching about giving from the pulpit. And you know what happened, guys? The generous would say, thank you, we have the privilege to give. That's what a generous giver will say. Thank you that we have the privilege to give to the Lord's cause and, and to further the cause of, of Christ and Christianity in this world today. You know, we don't, we don't, uh, when, when someone says they have the, the freedom to give and, and the privilege to give, they're not directing it to a particular cause or a group or, or something else. They're simply giving their tithe to the church. And this is what we would suggest most times, to give your tithe to the church. Now, why do we do that? Malachi 3.10 is a verse that, that we, need to, we need to remember and commit to memory here. It says this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Well, what is the storehouse? It's the church. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And get this, and test me. God, you, I don't, have you ever done that? Have you ever tested the Lord in giving? And he says, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Have you tested God in that? Have you tested him to, and given? And he opened the door of heaven and poured out a blessing upon your life. I wish we, we had time for testimonies in here because many of you can testify to that very thing. Now, we didn't do it to test God, but, but God says, put me to the test and see. Now, do we believe that? No, I don't think most of us believe that. But we should, because it's in the Bible, and, and the Lord says, do it. He said, test me. 
and see if I'm not. So why do we not do that more often? I, I don't know that. I, I don't know the answer to that. Why we don't do that every day of our lives. See, the tithe simply means a tenth is what it means. It's always been a yardstick of giving, actually, the tithe in church. And you notice also that tithing did not come from the law. When Moses was on the mountain receiving the law, tithing was not one of the ten. It just simply did not. Some 430 years before that, Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek. In Genesis 14, let me read you a few verses here. Genesis 14, and beginning with, with 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. Now he was a priest of God most high. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. He gave him a tenth of all. Abraham gave it a, a tenth of, it, of all he had to, to Melchizedek. Now, and even before that, we find uh, another first fruits type offering to the Lord of, of giving. It was in Genesis 4, verses 3 and 5. And you remember this story. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of the flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had reward for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. You see, well, we've often wondered, well, what happened to, to, to Cain's offering? Well, he brought something of the, of the fruit of the ground, but it wasn't the first fruit. It, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the, the, the best of the fruit. And what does it say that Abel brought? It says that he brought from his, let me find it again, the firstlings of his flock, the firstlings of his flock, and of their fat portion. Fat portion was a very premium gift uh, of, the, of the offering of, of, of the livestock. And so he gave his very best that he had. And see, this is, this is what that whole story is about, I think, that he gave it the best he had. And then Cain did not give the best he had of, of his crop. Now, so, so we, we move on with that now. And so why, why do many people not tithe anymore? Why do we bristle at that thought when the, when the pastor preaches, Pastor Jim preaches about tithing? Why do we bristle about that sometimes? I have all that church, they just want your money. That's all they want. They always talk about money this, money that. Give, give, give. You know, I don't know. I, I just I just don't like that. Well, you know, uh, a good friend of mine asked one time, uh, not too long ago, he said, oh, how in the world do you spend that, do you all spend that kind of money uh, on, on every week? At that church. Well, I tried to best my I could to explain that to him, and I think he understood it. Because if we understand one thing, once you look at that and you look at where that money goes, you realize it's not enough. God, it's not enough. We need more than that each week to do what the Lord would have us to do here in this place in Deer Park. No, so why do me and people do not tithe anymore? Well, one of the reasons is uh, we, you know, we're not taught to tithe anymore. I mean, very few people now teach their, their children to tithe because maybe the parents didn't even tithe. So they obviously they didn't teach it, they didn't tithe themselves. And so much anymore is not taught from the pulpit. Now, now many, so many people do not even understand it is a spiritual discipline, God. It's just something we do not do today. Spiritual disciplines are things that you commit your life to the Lord. And that's one of the spiritual disciplines, just like prayer and just like Bible study, is, this, is the discipline of giving. And the third reason is so many people just refuse to obey the Lord. And, and that's, that's the history too. So we see what's going on there. Now, giving must be a spiritual discipline that says this right here. This is important. When I give, I want no recognition. I want no plaque. I want no applause. I want none of that. You see, it allows us to see a process in our life that honors God. 
you see, many people, when, when you see these big gifts, when they name a building after them, or they name a, a new structure after them, or they name something after them, or they put big plaques on the side of the, the, the wall to tell you what that's about. You know, um, it, it's just something that, that it, it, I don't know how that honors God to, for you to, to give and be recognized that way. So, the mindset must be, I want no recognition for this. I'm going to do it simply because it's a spiritual discipline that I have in my life, is to give. You know, we can't be like the old boy that stood up in a meeting one time and that uh, looking for donations, and he said, I would like to give $100 anonymously. <laughs> you see? <laughs> That literally thing has almost happened to me before. I, I won't. I don't tell stories that get me in trouble, but it—it it is. It, that's the way it is. Yeah, he, said, he wants to give an honor for me, but he wants to quote the number in front of a whole bunch of people. You see, it, it, look at this. In tithing in the Old Testament was was a way of life. To, uh, we, we we know that you go back and look through the Old Testament. Now, quite frankly, now and you need to check this out. But I don't see the New Testament teaches a tithe. As a strict rule that you must give 10% everything. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, that we read earlier, what does it say? You must do as purposed in your heart. Guys, if you don't give that way, then you just well to keep it in your pocket. And it's not a matter. God would have you give more than 10%. And certainly, if he if he convicts you, then he wants you to give more. And, and if, if you give the, 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 the tenth, that's fine too. But don't give begrudgingly. You must give from the, from the fullness of your heart in Christ Jesus. Some old boy said there's three types of givers. There's flint givers. Flint. You, you know, you have to hammer, hammer those guys. And if you keep hammering, you may get a spark out of them. And he said another one, there's sponge givers. Well, you know what you have to do with a sponge? You have to squeeze that sponge a little bit. You have to squeeze money out of him. And then there's honeycomb givers. He said the sweetness just oozes out of them. A honeycomb giver. This woman, this widow, was a honeycomb giver. Now, can you imagine God in this world today if If all of the congregation tithed, we would never have a money problem here in this church ever again if, if everybody, every member tithed. And just think of the ministry you could do. Think of what you could do with the extra money to, to go out and, and help and, and uh, wherever, wherever needed and put it wherever ministry that would, that would grow the people in their, in their relationship to Christ. Now, I didn't make this one up. I actually read this. So, if it's not uh, kosher today, we we'll just blame it on some commentary I was in. There was a there was a black church, and and the preacher was preaching one day, and he said, "I believe God wants this church to stop crawling and start walking." Amen, brother. Let's start walking. Preach on. The congregation said, and he said, "I believe when He wants us to." To go from walking to running. Amen, brother. Let's start running. Preach on. And then he said, I believe then he wants us to go from running to flying. Amen, brother. Let's start flying. Preach on. Then he said, but it is going to cost a lot of money to fly. Brother, let's just go back to crawling. You see, that's the attitude that people have. We all want to do we all want to get out there. We all want to, to, to do what it, oh, it's going to cost. Well, now let's don't do that. You know, we do the same thing. You realize, you realize that, don't you, that we do the same thing. Maybe not that dramatic, but we do the same thing. Look at what we could do with, with additional tithes and additional funding in this church. We could, you, you could go out and, and you could have greater outreach uh, application. You could... You could feed the hungry. You could comfort the afflicted. And, and, and just so many things you could do that, that maybe we can't do fully as we'd like right now. But we'll have to tie to make that happen. It will cost a lot. 
And what happens? What do we do when we say that? Well, well, no, wait a minute. Let's let's form a committee and study that, and, and study it some more before we do that. Before we call out everybody to tie. Well, you see, we're doing the same thing that the, the, the church did there, with the pastor asking, "Let's stop crawling and start walking." You know, and if we're we're just like him, if we're saying amen to all that, and we don't give, God, it means nothing. We just say, Amen, let's do it. And then we don't give, it don't mean anything. Now, now let me let me just kind of bring this to some kind of conclusion here. I, I don't know if any of this happened or not. I, I have no idea, but if you just think about this a minute. Did you ever wonder what the widow found when she arrived at home, penniless? She had given all she had, the two mites. She'd given money that, that she had to use to eat on. Did the Lord maybe send Judas by her house with a gift? You know, Judas was in charge of the treasury of the disciples. And, and scripture tells us he dipped in, the, and dipped in the pot every now and then himself. But maybe he went by there and left her some money to live on. You remember just a few days earlier, Zacchaeus, when Jesus called him out, he said, I, I'll give half my goods to the poor. That's great. Maybe did Zacchaeus come out of the house and maybe leave her a, a little money to live on? I don't know. You know, we, we don't know that. That's pure speculation. But the one thing we do know, her reward will be great in heaven because of that. Now, we just have to know that, guys, that, that uh, we know that her crown is going to be heavy at least when, when she's called home for that. And now, now, another thing to remember, guys, many Christians give of their time, they give of their talent, they give of their money to the Lord. But typically, it's out of our abundance that we give. And then Scripture even said that in, in this thing we read today. It's out of their surplus. The sacrificial giving is another matter totally. You see, stewardship is a matter of the heart. Remember Dodie? It was a matter of the heart for her to give more than she could actually afford. And she gave sacrificially to do that. See, the widow gave because she loved God. And her giving provided a window to her heart so that God could, could, uh, could speak to her and, and uh, encourage her and do those things that, that he does in our lives also. See, when God considers our stewardship, he looks not merely at the amount of the gifts, but he looks at the motive of giving. Why are we giving? Are we giving begrudgingly? Then put it, keep it in your pocket because it's not going to count anywhere else. But if you give liberally and give because you love the Lord, God will open that door to heaven and pour out a blessing that you can't receive. Why don't you test God sometime in that? Why don't you just test just test that verse out and see? He, he said to do it. So maybe you could try that and just see what happens in that world. Now, let, let me just have a final statement here. God is watching how we give. Do you understand that? God is still watching us today, how we give. Now, just remember these two lines right here. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. One more time. We make a living by what we get, and we make a life by what we give. I could share some testimonies with you about how that actually happened. You could share some testimonies with me of how it happened in your life, and praise God that he means it when he says it. Okay, guys, so that's, uh, that's all we're going to talk about money today, and, and uh, that's the first time we talk about money now since we've been doing these lessons, so just uh, get over it, and, uh, and don't jump up and look for the off button when you start out in this lesson. Go ahead and listen through, and you'll, you'll be blessed for it one way or another. So, All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll be dismissed from this session today. <clears throat> Lord, we just, uh, it, it seems like that every time we talk about we can talk about everything, and, and we're just tickled to death over it. But then you mentioned money. Well, somehow that that flips another switch in our system, 
And we don't understand why we're always talking about money. Well, one reason it takes money to run this place. And it takes a, a lot of it. And so, Lord, we just, but, but let's not look at it that way. Lord, let us look at it with the, the, the discipline of giving. It is one of your requirements in our heart is to give. And, and it may be a number of ways we give. But money is definitely one of them. So we give so that your ministry might be forwarded in this state, in this, in this dear park, and from this building itself, and from the people here. Lord, may you continue to grow us in, in the ability to give. May you continue to, to, to reach out to us to just to test you, God, and to give and see what you do in our life because of that. Lord, I believe you'll do it. I believe you've done it in my life already, and I believe you'll do it in anyone's life who goes ahead and trusts you to do what you say you will do in Malachi 3.10. Lord, as we go from this place today, God, may you be honored, and may you uh, may glory be given to you in every aspect of our lives. And Lord, may we continue to honor you with our, with our daily lives and, and, our, and our reaching out and touching other lives wherever we go in this world today. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you again for being here today. We'll do it again next week.